In 1883, John Singer Sargent was 27 years old and he was looking to make a big impact on the art world. The best way to do so was to get the attention from the people and art critics at the yearly Paris Salon, the largest arts exhibition in the world. Sargent's idea to become famous was clear. He wanted to create a portrait of the hottest socialite of the moment, a fellow American immigrant, Virginie Amélie Gautreau. He found her intriguing and mysterious, and her white face, long neck and elegance made him deeply admire her, even to the point that he had a crush on her. If only he could convince her to sit for him, he would certainly get the desired attention at the Paris Salon, and the richest Parisians would be lining up to get their portrait painted by him. So Sargent mobilized all his contacts who were somewhat familiar with Gautreau, and surprisingly his efforts worked and Gautreau agreed to sit for him in February of 1883. Virginie Amélie Avegno was born in 1859 in New Orleans, the United States, and she was of French Creole ancestry. She usually went by her middle name Amélie. She came from a well-off family, but after the American Civil War, when Amélie was eight years old, she moved to Paris, where her mother would prepare her for life in the Parisian high society and planned her to marry a rich husband. At age 19, she married a much older, but very wealthy businessman. Strange as it may sound, her marriage allowed her a lot of freedom. Madame Gautreau, as she was now called, could attend parties, dress up in revealing clothes, wear makeup, and if she did it somewhat discreetly, she could have affairs. John Singer Sargent was not part of high society, but he had a lot of things going for him that could connect him with them. First, although he had an American passport, he had lived in Europe his whole life, actively traveling around with his family and fluent in multiple languages. Second, he was a very talented painter with great education and he chose to become a portrait painter, something that could naturally bring him into contact with people with money, who could afford a portrait commission. And third, he was quite sophisticated and cultured, allowing him to engage in conversations and play the piano for the high society. Sargent's way of working was to go through a sitter's wardrobe and select an outfit for them to wear for the portrait. In Gautreau's case, she had literally dozens of dresses and he ultimately settled on one of the most revealing dresses, a black one that fit closely to the body such that it would accentuate her figure in contrast with her white skin. As a professional socialite, Gautreau, however, found it very hard to sit still and she had so many social obligations every day. In fact, she wouldn't miss almost any good social event, leaving her almost no time to pose for Sargent. Instead, they postponed it until the social season was over, which would be by the summer, and then Sargent could come to Gautreau's Chateau in Brittany, where she would have more time. Sargent would take his time to find a perfect pose for his sitter, and he made some 30 different sketches in all sorts of positions of her. Some of those sketches have survived and you can see them here. It is suggested that Sargent could not make up his mind, either because he didn't want his sessions with her to end, or because he was so enthralled with her that it blocked him from clearly thinking about the best pose. Among the sketches and practice pieces was this small oil painting, which he created in a single evening, entitled Madame Gautreau drinking a toast, showing her beauty and sensuality during a dinner where she is toasting to an unseen guest. But he kept on struggling with the final portrait, which he described as the unobtainable beauty and hopeless laziness of Madame Gautreau. He decided to take a break and travel with some friends to Haarlem in the Netherlands to see some of the portraits of the innovative Baroque artist Frans Hals, who specialized in natural portraits with great compositions. This break did the trick, and when he returned, he was no longer infatuated with Gautreau, and he knew exactly how he would capture her. 
Unless you were already a famous artist, it was a real challenge to have your painting stand out at the Paris Salon. So the first choice by Sargent was to select a large canvas measuring 82 by 43 inches or 209 by 110 centimeters to maximize his chances of standing out from the other works. This engraving of the salon should give a bit of an idea how the walls of the different halls were crowded with many paintings all the way up to the ceiling. The salon jury decided the placement of each painting and if you had a small painting or your painting was hanging high up the wall, the chance that you would get some proper attention was minimal. Sargent settled on a pretty unique and uncomfortable pose for Gautreau. Against a simple brownish background, he painted her standing up, with her right hand leaning on a low table, and her face turned to the side to emphasize her body shape and neck, and her face captured from the side. One of the big challenges for Sargent was to capture the color of her skin realistically. Amélie made her skin extremely white, something that was fashionable, but to capture this unnaturally milky, pearly skin was not easy. Sargent did not want her to look like some zombie. And while Sargent was struggling to capture her skin color, one day the jeweled strap of her dress fell off Gautreau's shoulders. She would have put the strap back in place, but something suddenly clicked for Sargent and he actually decided to paint her with one strap down, something that you cannot see in the final painting, and more on that later, but you can get the idea from this photograph and an unfinished copy of the first version of the painting. Sargent thought that with one strap down, the painting got even more bold, exciting and intriguing. Sargent and Gautreau had agreed that the portrait would be exhibited at the salon under the title Portrait of Madame... Dot, dot, dot. Basically, an anonymous portrait. A title like that was actually very common among salon submissions, both with regards to male and female sitters, so the title was nothing special. However, just before the salon, a rumor leaked that the anonymous portrait by Sargent would actually be one of Madame Gautreau. And expectations of this portrait were very high. People couldn't wait to see it. Sargent, however, was nervous on the eve of the opening of the salon, while all his previous submissions had received very positive reactions, this one felt different, much riskier and would determine his future. But Madame Gautreau was confident about her portrait, certain that it would elevate her social status even more. There were 31 large rooms filled with paintings, and Sargent's painting was in the last room, surrounded by pretty unremarkable paintings. On the first day, everybody flocked to this room to see Madame Gautreau. And remember, they would not see this version of her, but the version with the fallen strap. Once the first people saw the portrait, the judgment was quick. How horrible and indecent. A scandal was born and spread like wildfire through the salon and outside. Some people were positive, but the large majority was shocked and negative. When Sargent returned to his studio in the evening, Madame Goutreau's mother angrily visited the studio and demanded Sargent to take the painting down, telling him that her daughter's reputation was ruined and that all of Paris made fun of her. Sargent refused to take it down, but was deeply disappointed by all the negative responses. The newspaper reviews the next day expressed that everything about the portrait was bad. Not only his composition, but also his technique, the light, the anatomy, etc. It was just outright ugly and shocking. And most of all, that fallen shoulder strap. Sargent inquired at the salon whether he could correct the strap, such that it was on her shoulder again, but he was not allowed to alter his work. So the period of the salon was a miserable one for Sargent, and at the end of the salon he reclaimed his work and put it back in his studio as you can see in this photograph. As he owned the painting, he could now do with it what he wanted. He quickly scraped off the paint of the fallen strap and painted the strap in the place we know it today. 
Sargent's reputation in Paris was now bad and he moved to London where he would rebuild his career successfully, not only becoming popular there, but also visiting the country in his passport for the first time and immediately having a lot of success in the United States. Virginie Amélie Gautreau, on the other hand, would remain in France. And while she tried to still make the best of her status in high society, her reputation was permanently stained. Before the portrait, she was the center of attention wherever she went, but that was no longer the case and she was ignored more and more. She tried to revive her reputation a few times by asking other painters to paint her portrait, but these portraits received little attention. And what about the portrait of Madame X? Sargent would keep the painting in his studio for two decades and only exhibited it again in 1905 at the Carfax Gallery in London. This time it was considered a masterpiece and its reputation would only grow from then on. It would be his most famous painting. In 1915, just after Madame Gautreau had died, Sargent decided to sell the painting to the Metropolitan Museum of Art for about 5,000 US dollars. But Sargent had one condition, based on the history of the painting and the later conflict he had with the Gautreaux, he asked not to mention her name in the title. And so it became known for the first time as the portrait of Madame X, and that is how it is still known today. Madame X basically means the portrait of Madame Unknown. An American variation on the way it was originally listed at the Salon as portrait de madame dot dot dot. Well, I hope this was an interesting discussion about this spectacular portrait. I need to give credits to the book that inspired this video and where most of the information comes from. If you want to learn more about this painting and the main characters, I fully recommend the book Strapless by Deborah Davis and I'll put a link to the book in the description box below this video. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.